Just wait a little minute for a couple more people to come in. Uh, introduce myself. My name is Mark Bradley. I'm the uh, CEO of Players Network, soon to be Greenleaf Farms International. Um, we've been publicly traded for quite a few years, previously in the media business, but now really focused 100% on the marijuana space. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, something really not too many people have really talked about yet, which is uh, cannabis as a commodity. And um, we have a very, very different viewpoint at Greenleaf Farms International of the cannabis industry. Most people viewed it as your t traditional cultivation, production, dispensaries. Is it a medical market? Is it a um, recreational market? We're really looking at the next generation of cannabis. And that's what this presentation is going to be about. It's really um, not only focusing on being an educational presentation, but of course, we want to promote our company and what we're doing and the value that we can look at from an investment standpoint. This is the money show. So um, I think I'm, I'm a little biased right now, but I think you're going to find this one of the best opportunities you've ever seen in your life. Uh, I believe uh, Greenleaf Farms International is being positioned to be the next Facebook, so to speak, where someone can buy a stock very cheap and see it value and see it increase within as the company grows and right now we're positioned really to grow so um, uh, my name is Mark Bradley again I th I'm gonna officially start let's see if the technology works here okay it works so we're a public company and I want to start out by putting a little disclaimer up here um, a lot of statements I'm gonna say are forward-looking and they are based on how we view the future and based on the contracts we have in hand um, you need to do your own research um, for any investment. Uh, we do have um, uh, Ms. Hardy here if you want to speak to anybody, if you want to set up, <laughs> you you set up any uh, meetings with me and you're interested in meeting, she can uh, arrange setting it up. Uh, we have Dave Kleppinger who's standing in the back. Dave, raise your hand, please. Dave, raise your hand. If anyone's interested in talking about the public side of the company, there's Dave. Um, my partner, Brett Pajunas, is sitting down here, one of the uh, directors of Greenleaf Farms. Um, Brett normally does these things with me. I told him, though, I'm gonna, I got a, such a short period of time. Both of us are long spoken. But Brett can also talk to you about investment opportunities with us as well. So um, let me move forward into the presentation here. Well, there we go. Um, so Greenleaf Farms has four main divisions. We have our Las Vegas um, production and cultivation facility. It's 27,000 square feet. It's traditional indoor growing hydroponics. We're serving the Nevada market. Um, we have our CBD line, Greenleaf Pure, which is uh, hitting the CBD market. Primarily it's available right now through mail order. Um, we TVs our media division. We actually started, our background of the company is media entertainment. Uh, one of our other board directors created the TV series Baywatch and 25 other movies and series. We've created different networks. We're really a marketing based company, which we think is really the key to building any brand and having a successful business is to have the marketing backbone. So that's what Weed TV does. Um, the project that I'm really going to focus in on for this presentation is our Argentina project, which is uh, Greenleaf Farms, Jujuy, Argentina. Um, uh, I'm calling it the commodities project because the more I've gotten knowledge of the cannabis industry, I realized, as I said earlier, this is not just, you know, growing smoking, medical, recreational, you know, it, it really is so much more than that. And when you look back at the history of the cannabis industry and the cannabis plant, really it was used for so many other things. And then when prohibition hit, a lot of these other things that cannabis used was used for uh, went away. And I'm going to give you some examples here. I call this the 13 disruptive industries that the cannabis industry is a um, you know, is, uh, is affecting. So when you're investing in the cannabis industry, think about other industries that are multi-billion dollar industries that really people aren't even looking at right now. And I'm just going to kind of give you just some very top level examples. I'm going to start on the bottom though. The construction industry. Um, the cannabis plant is, has extremely strong fibers and the fiber itself is being used now for 
you know, uh, for concrete, hempcrete they call it. Um, it's being used for wall boards, you know, for, for housing. It has better insulation than your typical drywall that exists today. Um, the paper industry, I mean, if the, you know, if um, the paper industry didn't shut down um, cannabis in 1935, you know, because all the sponsorships were coming from DuPont and the lumber industry, we would all be, you know, already using cannabis paper. It was we the Declaration of Independence was signed on a piece of cannabis paper. Um, biodiesel, um, the, the oils are very rich within the cannabis industry. The seeds, so there could be there. It's they're using the cannabis to create ethanol. Um, certainly, we're affecting the food industry. A lot less people are drinking alcohol that are relying on cannabis now. It's a lot safer. We're certainly digging into the tobacco industry. People are smoking CBD cigarettes. They say one third of all cigarette smokers in the next 10 years are, is going to be moving to CBD based cigarettes. Um, textiles, um, uh, hemp based clothing, um, very popular. The cotton industry also helped put an end to the cannabis industry. Um, about the same time the, uh, the, the lumber industry did, so now we're back competing with the cotton industry. Plastic, uh, Henry Ford, many people may not know about this, first Model T was actually made of hemp plastic. Super strong plastic, better for the environment. You can imagine how many plastic bottles are there out there that take 100 years to be biodegradable. If they actually mix the plastic with hemp, it'll be a lot better for our environment. So. Um, going ahead, of course, the agriculture business, reinventing the agriculture business, making it cool again, and bringing new revenue streams to other crops that haven't been as profitable. Um, packaging, uh, the ones you probably are most familiar with are the three on the top, which is cannabis being used for medicine, pharmaceuticals, beauty, and wellness. Um, there was a show in Vegas about a month ago, the ADS show, and I decided to go walk around there. 140 companies had different CBD products, anywhere from CBD for your pets to face masks to gummy beers to candies to tinctures for inflammation for medical. There's so many different uses right now um, for the, the uh, for the cannabinoids. There's 113 different cannabinoids that come out of the plant. So when you take a look at companies that like Coca-Cola and Pepsi saying, hmm, we're thinking of making a cannabis-based CBD water or CBD drink, and you see people like Estee Lauder coming in and doing cannabis masks. This is just the tip of the iceberg. The products that are coming out of the cannabis plant, the demand is much higher than the supply right now. And eventually, the supply is going to be there, and it's going to catch up, and cannabis is going to be like a commodity, no different than gold, oil, wheat, corn, any, uh, any other type of commodity, who can actually produce the highest quality at the lowest price at the end of the day is going to win. And that's why I believe our business model and our partnership with the government of, uh, of Hujuy, Argentina is going to be able to compete on a worldwide scale. Give you just a little bit about the business process for not everyone that understands what really takes place when, when, you, when you have the cannabis plant. You start out with the seeds. Seeds go into a pot, into a nursery. They go into a field. The, well, the plants that grow are usually anywhere from four feet to six feet. And when it's stripped down, you call that the biomass. It's really the entire plant. You strip the stem out, all the leaves, all the flowers, and everything's the biomass. Um, the biomass is extracted into oils, goes through a lab, it's tested. And then what comes out of there are two main products, a distillate, which is a oil, and an isolate, which is a powder. The difference is the powder is water soluble and you can use other products to create with it. Um, the waste, after you pull the oil out of it, is called the hemp bio waste. So what do you do with the bio waste? The bio waste you could use for packaging, textiles, plastic, paper, construction. The oils are for medical, pharmaceutical, wellness, food, and alcohol. And Sometimes you can go straight from the biomass into the agricultural business, which is, to, which is creating your biodiesel, your energy, and your, your tobacco products, you know, in, in the replacement products. So there's, the process has really been around for a long time. It's, the technology has just gotten better, and the way to apply the products are much better. So again, when you're thinking of investing in the cannabis industry, Maybe you're really investing into clothing, you know, and that's, a, that's what you really have to know. What strain are you growing? I'm going to have a Q&A at the very end. Okay, tell you a little bit about our project in Jujuy, Argentina. We're the first company in the world to partner with the government. So 
operate, I operate in California, operating in Nevada. We're a public company. I spend 80% of my time sometimes dealing with compliance and fees and, and all kinds of stuff just to even do business. You know, it's a very, very difficult environment to work in North America. Um, this is a very unique situation being partners of the government because their whole thing that they want is not only advancement of medical studies, but the creation of jobs. I want to bring shareholder value, create jobs, and advance medical. That's kind of the purpose of this company. Um, it's very different. If it, we're, all, we're all on the same team. Unlike in the US, they just want their license fees or taxes, and it's up to you to either you know, be successful or fail. Um, all the licenses are provided by the government. This is the most impressive thing that I want to show you. One of the ones is we have a 14,000 hectare farm. Doesn't mean, that's, which is 54 square miles and, or 33,000 acres, just to put things in perspective. It's a lot of land. Um, we're not going to start out growing 54 miles of, of cannabis. We're going to start out small and we're going we're to expand. And the nice thing about the farm is it's completely organic. Most areas of the farm haven't been grown on in 60 years. The farm was started in 1910, so the farm's about 110, 100, almost 120 years old. So you hear about all these investments into Kentucky and um, South, uh, you know, South Carolina, and you know, all over the U.S., Oregon, Colorado. I'm, you know, I'm born and raised in the U.S., and I like keeping jobs here. Um, but at the end of the day, the compliance is really hard to work with. There's absolutely no way any of these farms can compete with us in Argentina because we can grow all year round in perfect conditions and have an organic product. Most of these farms that say, hey, we're growing 2,000 acres of hemp, well, before it was hemp, maybe last year was corn or it was wheat. Well, all the, you know, all the, uh, the soil has all the nutrients in it and the pesticides and different things that are carrying over. So the stuff that grown in the U.S. right now, unless it's a small farm, is not organic. So this is a truly organic farm. Uh, there's an experienced agricultural team. I mean, the, uh, the Argentinians are born and raised with agriculture in their, in their blood. They've been doing tobacco and sugar cane and all kinds of crops since they were born. Um, an amazing work team, great people. Um, we can grow 11 months out of the year, so I, we're looking at three to four crops a year opposed to in the U.S. one. So the same land, we're growing three to four times more volume. Um, and the manufacturing and production area that we set up is in one of only 11 free zones in the actual country. So it's pretty neat. It's like having a duty-free shop at an airport. So here we are where, you know, we go four miles away, we extract it. The airport's five miles from our, our duty-free uh, tax zone center. We can ship products around the world. Of course, you know, legal products. If you know, we're not going to ship a THC product, to, to somewhere that doesn't take that or a CBD somewhere. You know, it just, it, we just have to, you know, what products we're going to be producing eventually will be appropriated to the, um, to the market. Now, one of the things I want to mention is that we're starting strictly 100% medical. This is a medical initiative. Um, and marijuana, cannabis, CBD, none of it's even legal in Argentina yet. This is 100% right now for exportation, except for the amount of oil that we're going to donate to the hospitals for research of epilepsy. And we're going to really be a partner with the government and help them grow. So this is a, we have an amazing deal. I don't know any company in the world that has partnered with an entire country. So it's a great opportunity for us. Um, a few little pictures. That's our free zone there. That's me and the uh, Gaston Morales. Um, the day we sign, that's our, our hacienda in the back, which is our Greenleaf Farms office is built in 1910. Um, Governor, Ministry of Health, myself. Just a few little pictures when we signed the deal in December. Um, where are we right now in our timeline? Everyone says, okay, Mark, you, you have this great deal. When are you going to get started? Well, we, we got started. Um, the, our security plan is in place. We installed street lights, cameras, surveillance systems. We have guard shacks. We have live guards on the property right now. The whole pl project has started. Um, we have authorization to export genetics, which was a, a feat on its own. It took us about four months to have the U.S. and the Argentina government work together to actually allow us to ship genetics. Um, 
So we shipped initially about 25,000 seeds, various uh, CBD genetics. Um, we have our cultivation team on the ground. They actually landed four days ago. So we actually have our team now setting up the infrastructure, the headquarters, putting together the plan. We have 40,000 square foot of greenhouses that we purchased through Israel that are on its way to Argentina as well. That's gonna be for our nurseries. Um, we have 35 hectares, 86 acres of land already irrigated, ready to go, waiting for the, the plants to hit, uh, to hit the, um, the soil, which will be in the springtime, roughly September. Um, we'll be harvesting in December, extracting in our first revenues in January this coming year. So um, after the first crop is gone, done, then it's going to be a perpetual basis. We're going to keep adding more land and more land and more land. You know, as long as there's going to be, um, you know, a demand, we're going to fill it. Um, so just to give you a little idea of our business model, I call it biomass made to order. Um, when we were in California operating, I met a lot of really amazing companies that were in the traditional agricultural business. And, you know, they'd have big greenhouses and huge fields, and I would talk to the owners, say, why are you growing basil in that one and lettuce in that one? And they just, they, everything's done on a future. So if you're a Kroger's, you say, hey, I need a thousand cases of lettuce, you go to the grower and say, I need a thousand cases of lettuce. And six months later, four months later, however long it takes to grow lettuce, you get it. So our business model is going to be very the same. We're going to give people the op option around the world, what strain do you want? What formulation do you want? What fibers do you want? What compounds do you want? You know, um, you know so the, the ones I'm going to focus in on are, I'm going to start out with the two most well-known compounds right now. Um, and if anyone's not familiar with it, would be full-spectrum distillate and full-spectrum isolate. So essentially, remember I showed you the chart, how we squeeze the oil? This is the oil. This oil is like gold, and I kid you not. The price of this oil ranges in anywhere from three or $4,000 a liter or a kilo. If it's powder, it's kilo. If it's a liter, it's oil. To as much as a seventy, eighty thousand dollars if it's a rare cannabinoid. Remember, I said there's 113 unique cannabinoids. The ones everyone really focuses in on is, you know, is THC the most well known and CBD. But there, there's some plants that carry, you know, small, minute uh, uh, amount of different cannabinoids, and that particular cannabinoid could be. Uh, a sleep medicine, could be an arthritis medicine, could be the, the cure to Parkinson's disease. So we have the ability on a large scale to have so much land that we can grow different cannabinoid profiles. And that's something very unusual that you have to have a very large property to be able to, to do that. I'm going to give you a little idea of the economics. Now I'm talking about the company um, and really the financial opportunity that we have with uh, Greenleaf Farms International. Um, we based our, this example on 1,000 acres because we're planning on having 1,000 acres planted the first year. Um, so from September um, of this year through September of 2020 is our goal is to have the first 1,000 acres. So I wanted to give some you guys some assumptions. The current wholesale price right now on isolate and distillate, the oil and the powder that I showed you, is going for $5,000. You know, that's for something not much larger than this, just a liter, you know, and this actually makes a lot of medicine. And um, so for every acre, we're estimating we're gonna generate 64 liters every growing system, every growing season. So what we decided to do just for making things conservative so people don't think we have, we're having pie in the sky numbers of what we're gonna do, we discounted it to half price and said, what if we only get $2,500 a liter, even though the going rate right now is 5000 So for every acre we grow, we're going to generate $150,000 per growing season or $150 million for the whole 1,000 acres three times a year, $450 million will be projected on only 1,000 acres with extremely conservative projections. And the nice thing about what we're doing is, you know, we're, we're growing in North Las Vegas right now, indoors this is so much easier i mean this is we're growing cornfields and we're harvesting the cornfields and extracting the oils out of them you know it's just it's a much easier process to do so give you a little idea of what i estimate our our, our valuation to be 
We're public today, our stock's at 2.2 cents a share. We have a $15 million market cap. And it's, it, it hurts me to say, but that's what it is right now. You're a penny stock, you're not all, and everyone's not traded equal. You know, um, if we hit our projected gross revenues at three, 450 million, we project our net profits are gonna be at, uh, at um, 375 million. We're gonna have about a 75% gross profit margin. If we take only a 10 times earnings per share, most public companies trade at 20, 30, 40 times. So I took a really, really conservative earnings per share. Our market cap should be $3.75 billion within about a 24 months from now. So there's a lot of room to grow to say, here we are today and here we're gonna to be tomorrow. Um, now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get there and the, and the opportunities that we have. It's really simple, um, direct investment into the Huhui project. If anyone is interested, it, it is a big dollar number to, for a very small percentage, but it, it provides a very quick return the way we're structuring our deals. Um, we're creating joint ventures on parcels, so if anyone is in an industry, say you're in the cannabis industry, you have your own farm, you have your own CBD product, you have your own um, clothing line, and you say, hey, we'd like to do a joint venture for a piece of land for that product, we can customize those. You know, and, and again, they're very, the way they're set, this is set up, it's very lucrative very quickly. Um, the majority of people probably aren't here to look at these big deals. Hopefully there are some people, but you can always buy stock in the open market. Our stock symbol is PNTV and do your own research. Um, you know, read our, look at our filings, go to our website, um, you know, and, um, you know, and that's really the easiest way to do it. Um, you can talk to Dave Kleppinger back there in, are in charge of investor relations. Go to our website, sign up for our newsletter, and it's under playersnetwork.com. And again, it's going to be changed to Greenleaf Farms. And I think that will give you, um, you know, information. We every, once or twice a week we send out newsletters of what's going on. We keep our shareholders abreast. We really believe in, you know, communicating with everybody. Um, that's my presentation. I wanted to leave a few minutes left for some, uh, I think we have four minutes left for some question and answers. Um, if anyone has any questions, I would be glad to uh, answer them. Sir. Okay, with all the uh, good information you provided, uh, from your honest opinion, is there any, anyone in the United States or anywhere else in the world that has any close competition to all the things that you're working? In other words, as a package? Absolutely not. Um, there is some activity in Uruguay, um, but Uruguay doesn't have quite the, the seasons we have. People are also investing into Colombia. The problem with Colombia is the humidity is creating high microbials, and you're not getting that good a quality of cannabis. You're getting a lot of mold in it. Um, in the U.S., again, the same thing is you can't compete on this level because we have perfect growing conditions all year round. So in my opinion, no. But I'm biased. Maybe I'll learn something. Sir, in the back. So we so right now it is completely legal to um, to import cannabis uh, CBD into the U.S. They're already doing it in, through China and Europe right now. So you know yes we'll be able to do that. So. Very good question. Um, they are getting thirty percent of our net on our cultivation side of things and five percent of our net on our oils and extractions. In addition, but their primary thing is they want jobs. Very, uh, you know, so yes, good question. Uh, do you know the cost per gram on the distillate? Um, yeah, this is really, really high volume. Um, our cost is, let me just tell you, our cost will be under $1,000 a liter to make it. Okay, well, well below that. So if you want to figure out how many grams are in a liter, um, I think there's 13 or 1400. So, very little. Sir. That share structure question. You guys uh, have a lot of shares. And are you going to do, you guys consider a reverse split or retire some shares? You know, I, people, I, get, I get questions about reverse splits all the time. With this kind of revenue behind it, we actually might, at some point, might do a forward. Because right now, people think might, you might think, 
we don't have the revenue now to support it. Might, some people might now think it's a reverse, but when you're doing a tenth of the money that I, you know, even the first 86 um, acres that we're starting to plant in the next few weeks, that alone will generate about $40 million of revenue in the first year. So there's no reason to do anything like that. Maybe in retire shares, yeah. So, question in the back, sir? I'm sorry, what'd you say? 2.2 cents. If 700 million, and if I, if I hit my numbers the way I'm you know, looking at it right now, from our market cap today, where I think it's gonna be in 24 months, you're talking 250 times. Eight cents is the high, this is the low. Any other questions? Sir? The Argentina has had massive inflation, government instability. How do you rectify doing business down there with that history? Uh, very good question. You know, a lot of people ask me that coming in, you know, uh, gee, you're coming into a foreign land. Um, the relationship we have with the government is very good. Um, our contracts are very strong. They're registered with the government as well. Um, I believe by creating jobs, we're going to actually be more welcome than ever. I mean, that's really what they want is job creation. So um, I don't see them kicking out good businesses that are creating jobs. Can I do what? Can you ship the crop or you need to ship all the It doesn't make any sense to ship biomass. Why? I mean, I mean, pull up a container in a quarter acre. I mean, it's, it, you know, it makes sense to ship back the oil. You know, it just doesn't make any sense to do that. If you want, if you want to buy our biomass, I'll sell it to you. So right now, right now we're considered an agricultural product. So we're no different than anybody, you know, shipping any an agricultural product from Argentina, because that's really what we are. So um, I can have room for one more question, because I'm getting the the signal in the back. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, sir. About a million and a half to two million. Just go. It's PNTV. Just go look up the stock, and you know, the charts will tell you. Um, one more question, sir. Do you, since you're growing outside, do you have any uh, problem uh, growing a crop that's going to be consistent and, and consistent so that it can be used for some Okay, so the, the consistency comes in the in the in the processing afterwards by you know how how many times are you gonna clean the oil. So you can take literally any crop and turn it into a ninety nine percent pure pharmaceutical product. It's just how much work that's gonna take to do it. So at the end of the day, uh, um, you know the uh, at the end of the day, uh, you know ninety nine percent distillate is ninety nine percent distillate. Full spectrum is full spectrum. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate everybody. And I will be, I am going to be on this panel here too, so. And we have a booth. And we have a booth if anybody wants to come by to our booth and check it out. What number is the booth?